because there's some question about how to properly simplify the answers to quadratic equations, I wanted to take a moment to show you how to do just that. Here we have a function f of x is 3x squared plus 8x plus 5. So f of x is 3x squared plus 8x plus 5. My a, b, and c in this case are going to be 3, 8, and 5. And we'll put them into the quadratic formula, which tells me that x is the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of, plus or minus the square root of, b squared minus 4ac, all of it over 2 times a. So let's just substitute our a, b, and c in for a, b, and c in the formula. So in our case, x is going to be equal to the opposite of 8, which is negative 8, plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64 minus, and let's do this piecemeal here, so 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 5. And all of that is going to be over 2 times our a, which is 3. Okay, now let's simplify. To simplify, we have to start with what's underneath the radical here. So we've got negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64. Let's see, negative, positive, positive means I'm going to subtract. 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 5 is 60, and that will all be over 6. Alright, now we can simplify 60 minus 6, 64 minus 60, so that will be negative 8, plus or minus the square root of 4, all over 6. And it looks like we have um, rational roots here, because the square root of 4 is 2, so I have negative 8 plus or minus 2 divided by 6. Now, because I've got nothing in the radical, I know that I have two rational roots. And let's see what those are. Um, there is negative 8 minus 2 over 6, and then there will be negative 8 plus 2 over 6. So my first rational root will be negative 10 over 6, or negative 5 thirds when I divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. I'll get negative 5 thirds. My second rational root will be negative 8 plus 2 or negative 6 over 6 which simplifies to a negative 1. So those are my two rational roots. That will be this answer here I believe. Let's check that. Yay for us. We got that right. Let's see if we can give ourselves a little bit more of a challenge trying to simplify our expression. Here we have f of x is negative 5x squared minus 2x plus 6. So negative 5x squared minus 2x plus 6. So our a, b, and c are negative 5, negative 2, and 6. Um, substituting it into the equation, I get the opposite of 2, which is negative 2, which is 2 plus or minus the square root of, let's make that out, 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a is negative 5 times c is 6, and all of that goes over 2 times negative 5. All right, well that will simplify again underneath the radical first, so 2 plus or minus the square root of 4, let's see, Negative times a negative is a positive times a positive gives me a positive. 4 times 5 is 20 times 6 is 120. And all of that goes over a negative 10. All right, let's continue simplifying. Again, underneath the radical, everything else is going to stay the same, but underneath the radical, I have 124 because that's 4 times, I mean 4 plus 20. Now I need to find out if 124 is factorable. I mean, are there any square roots in 124? Um, so let's do it by prime factoring. So that'll be 62. Divide 62 by 2, and that'll give me 31. And 31 is prime. So I know that 124, another way to write that would write that as the square root of 4 
times the square root of 31. And we know that with the square root of 4 is 2, so a 2 is actually going to come out of the radical there. So what we're really saying here is 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 31. And here's where we have to be careful. It might look like we're done here since we've simplified the radical, but our whole expression is not simplified. It might be worthwhile to look at it as the this part here being 2 over the negative 10 plus or minus this part here, which will be our 2 radical 31 over a negative 10. Now in this case, it makes it a lot easier to see what's supposed to simplify. We can say, oh, well, 2 divided by negative 10 is the same as 1 divided by a negative 5, plus or minus. And again, I have 2 over a negative 10, so that'll be 1 over a negative 5. But this one will be times a radical 31. Since I just have 1 radical 31, can't I just say that I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 31 all over 5? I just recompose this number here. I just recomposed it to look like that. And let's see if we have something in our Khan Academy that says 1 plus or minus the square root of 31 over 5. 1 plus or minus is over the negative 5. It should have been a negative. Yep, those are both negative. Over a negative 5. And that's here. 